I'm going to go over how to set up a Photoshop file for doing a belt print or a sublimation on a t-shirt. This is really important because when you make your art you want to make sure that it properly fits the garment when printed and that you make the art big enough so that when it goes to print you don't find out that it doesn't cover the sleeves or it's not long enough, all that stuff. Uh, a good setup will save you a ton of trouble in printing and your printers will definitely appreciate it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get the actual spec sheet. This one in particular is from American Apparel because they're awesome enough to actually just post all their spec sheets online. It's a pretty simple spec sheet. It's just chest width, uh, body length, and sleeve length, but that's really all you need. It doesn't give you the information of neck drop, but on a crew neck, you can kind of assume that's roughly four inches. And if it was a V neck, you might want to give yourself up to like six inches, unless it's one of those crazy, crazy deep Vs. And then you're going to want to ask the garment uh, vendor how deep that goes. But this is a nice and simple way to start with a crew neck. So as you can see here, it gives us all the information we're going to need. Uh, the first things to look at are basically the, the chest width and the front body length. So I'm going to go over here to this file and we're going to kind of take a quick gander at what I have here. I have just a kind of blank mock-up. You don't need this to make your files, but it, it can be a bit helpful uh, if you want to be really visual and actually end up stretching a shirt to kind of fit properly. Uh, so when you're actually laying your art over it, you can kind of visualize a little bit better how it's going to look. But let's dive right in. So you have to first know what sizes you're going to run the print on. Uh, just to keep this simple, I'm going to run this small through 2XL. So when we're setting up our canvas size, we want to make sure it's big enough to fit the 2XL. So that's where these uh, the chest width and the front body length come into play. And they also give a sleeve length. And honestly, to me, these seem really long. I've I've personally never went over six inches for each sleeve because usually when it's actually like laying down, it doesn't, you know, you don't measure across the full nine inth inches because it has like a slope. But I'm just going to go with this because it's on here. But if you ever do a garment and you don't know how big to make each sleeve, just assume six inches for each. But like I said, I'm going to use this nine and three eighths. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the chest width of 26 inches and then add 9 and 3 eighths to it twice, uh, ones for each sleeve. And that'll bring us up to a total, let's see here, of 44.75 inches. And then when you take that 44.75, you want to add an inch border to each side, the left and the right, so there's a little bit of wiggle room. That way, if the belt shifts when it's printing, or if you find out your art's not quite big enough, having an inch extra on each side might really save you, because uh, it's a terrible feeling when you make art, and you're like, oh, it's this much too too small and I can't easily replicate that extra inch or whatever on each side. So in the end we're going to make the total canvas size 46.75 inches and then we're going to take the front body length and that's going to be the height of the overall thing and we're just going to take the 32 and 3 eighths and add two inches one on top and one on bottom once again that's this wiggle room so it's 34 and 3 eighths. So I'm just going to do that right now with this canvas. Go to edit canvas size, or actually image, sorry, image canvas size. We're going to make our width, as we decided, of 46.75 and the height of 34 and 3 eighths. And 3 eighths is 0.375. So 34 point, oops, 375. There we go. Now this is kind of our starting point right here. As you can see, I have the rulers turned on. If you don't have your rulers on, it's just Control r on a PC or Command-R on a Mac to flip your rulers on. And you can also see that they're in inches. If they're not currently in inches for you, if they're in pixels or something, on a PC, you just go to Edit, oops, go to Edit, Preferences, and then Units and Rulers, and make sure your rulers are set to inches. If you're on a Mac, I think it's actually called like Photoshop or something like that where it's under. But just, just basically find the preferences and then the units and rulers. So I'm going to dive on up here to the top and you're going to want to drag from right here basically in the center of the the ruler thing. If you just drag straight down make a ruler going across the very 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 top of the garment or the the canvas and then we're going to want to make another ruler just a little bit below that and we're just going to draw out basically the wiggle room that, that extra inch on the top and just go on ahead and draw a ruler to that inch marker. There we go. And then we're going to want to draw a ruler right in the center of the garment so we know exactly where that falls. So I'm going to have to bust out a calculator here real quick. And take the 46.75 and divide it by 2. 
which gives us 23 and 3 eighths. So we're going to draw a ruler here. And it kind of, Photoshop seems to have done a pretty good job of just automatically sticking it right there, but you, you want to double check it because it doesn't always do it perfectly, but as you can see, 23 and 3 eighths right here. So now we know where the center, right down the middle of the garment is. We have, this is the very top, the, remember the inch is just the wiggle room. And we're going to want to zero this out. So up here in the corner, if you drag, and it's up here, like, you drag it, and then this will re-zero the, the actual rulers to wherever you drag it to. So I'm dragging it right here at the top of the garment and the center of the garment. And as you can see, once I do that, the rulers start at zero here and zero right in the center. And this is really helpful. And once again, it's just in the top left corner here, uh, right where the two different rulers combine, you just drag that. And wherever you drag that point, it'll zero it out. And now we're going to want to draw the neck drop. It can be a bit useful when you're making your arc to make sure it's not cut off by the neck. And we're just going to assume it's four inches. For any crew neck, four inches is a, is a pretty darn safe bet. If it's a really uh, like a small kid's garment, you might want to try like three inches. And we're going to want to draw now the very bottom of the 2XL, just to kind of know where that falls. So I'm going to jump on over here to the spec sheet. And actually, you can do the small and the medium as well. So I tend to personally, when I'm drawing them out, I just do the small, medium, and then whatever the largest size is. Or if I was going smaller, you always want to have the marker for the smallest shirt and the marker for the biggest shirt. And then I personally represent all my stuff as a medium when I'm showing it. So we're just going to assume that we're doing just small, medium, and 2XL. So small, 18 inches chest width, and 28 and 3 eighths length. So we're going to draw the 28 and 3 eighths length. I'll just do all the lengths right now, and then we'll jump in the widths. So I'm going to go in here and do the 28 and 3 eighths. And I'm just looking at my rulers. So that's 1, 2, 3 eighths right there. And I'm going to do the medium, which is 29 and 3 eighths. Just draw that ruler right down. And I'm not going to worry about the large and extra large, because basically I just want to make sure it fits in the smallest, the largest, and then I want to see how it fits in the medium, since that's a good baseline point. So 2XL is 32 and 3 eighths. Let's go down here to the 32. And now our links are pretty settled. I'm actually going to go on ahead and just put a white background on here so that you can kind of see these lines a little bit better. And next we're going to actually do each side of the garment so we can kind of know the width of what's going on. And the only real important thing to think about here is you want to, since we're drawing from a, oops, from a zero to center point, we're going to want to divide the total width in two so each side, you know, it makes sense. So I'm looking at a small, medium, and 2XL, 18, 20, and 26. So if you divide 18, 20, and 26 by 2, you get 9, 10, and 13. So we look at our rulers here, and I'm just going to draw out the lines at 9, 10, and 13. And then repeat it for the other side here. So once again, 9, 10, and 13. And all these numbers are going to change depending on the garment. So this is just, you know, this is an example and a good... Uh, kind of way to know what you have to grid out but you know look at the garment and make sure you're doing the math based on that and not the things that I'm currently using but right here you have a basically everything that you need to know is on this grid so you know where the center point lies you know where the garment the top is where the neck drop falls and then where the bottom is and as you can see this is this is a super important consideration when you're doing belt prints. Like from a small to 2XL, that's a pretty massive gap in terms of how the scaling is going to look. So you want to always have that in mind. And if you're working with kids' garments, this can be a ridiculous difference between like a small or an extra small and a large, like six inches plus. And we're dealing with an already small kids' garment. It's, it's really something you have to visualize and keep in your mind. And then you can also see the widths here. And this is all sleeve print. I try not to put anything too important over the sleeve prints because it's really unpredictable. Uh, you know, when they run that through the belt, they're not going to be able to line up every sleeve perfectly. It's just going to kind of be like they get it close and run it through. So don't, don't fret too much on the actual sleeve placement. But as you can see here, I also decided to put in a garment. 
And this garment, I don't know if it's an actual 2001 American Apparel. It, it's probably pretty close. So I'm just going to scale it on up. We're going to see how it looks. And this helps if you're a very, very visual person and you want to see your stuff fall on that garment as you're doing it. It can be helpful to have just a, you know, it can be pixelated like crazy. Uh, it's just for your your own knowledge of how stuff is going to fall. And as you can see, the the length is pretty set up. The width isn't quite right on, so I'm just going to manually stretch this out. Once again, it's not critical that this is to perfect scale. It's just giving you a better idea of what your art's going to look like when it's on the actual garment here. So I'm just keeping in mind, like, this is the medium line for length, and these are the medium lines for width. But that's that's pretty much it. Uh, when it comes to doing belts or sublimations, it's all about the initial setup and then the art. You know, you just pop it on, and when you send that to a printer, you can be pretty darn confident that it's gonna, you know, it's gonna look good, and that when it prints, what you get back is actually what you're expecting to get back, and not something that's off scale or you know missing art in one place or another. And if you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Hopefully, it's a, you know, a good idea of a starting point. And just showing the importance of, you know, grid out your artwork properly. It'll save you so much time and your printers will know that when you set this up, you knew what you were doing. And also, if you ever want to hide the guides, it's just under view and then show and then guides. And you can turn them off and on. Like if you want to preview your art when you're done with it, and you don't want the guidelines kind of, you know, chopping it up. But there you have it. If this was helpful, you know, please hit like and let people know. And also subscribe for more great information. Thanks for watching.